students in this lecture we will be discussing structural changes in chromosomes and we will focus on paracentric inversion so in the previous lecture we have discussed uh, deletion and duplication and we have already discussed what happens in these two structural aberrations and you can refer part one of this lecture uh, for details. So inversions are of two types, paracentric inversion and pericentric inversion. In paracentric inversion, the inverted part of the chromosome does not include centromere, while in pericentric inversion, the inverted part of the chromosome includes centromere. Now in this picture you can see that there is a normal chromosome and the normal chromosome has the genes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. This is the order of the gene. In pericentric inversion you can see that the inverted region is F, V, D and since it is including centromere so we call it pericentric inversion. In paracentric inversion you see that the inverted region is D, C, D since it is not including the centromere. So we call it paracentric inversion. Now in this diagram you can see again that the genes are A, B, C, D, E, F. In paracentric inversion uh, the inverted region is E, D. Since it is not including centromere we call it paracentric. In pericentric inversion you can see that the in inverted region compared to the normal chromosome is C, D. Since it is including centromere so we call it pericentric inversion. So here in this diagram, you see normal chromosome with the order of the genes A, B, C, D, E and inverted I with represented with I is A, C, B, D, E. Now to enable um, bivalent formation during zygotin stage so that all the genes lie parallel to each other, both the chromosomes normal and inverted undergoes loop formation and this is different from deletion and duplication because in deletion and duplication only one of the chromosome undergoes loop formation while in inversion whether it is paracentric or pericentric both the chromosomes will form loop so here you can see that the normal chromosome as well as the inverted chromosome is showing loop formation and we will be discussing this like here if we take the example of paracentric inversion you can see that um, the say this is first chromosome with capital uh, dominant alleles and this is the green chromosome is having the dominant alleles a b c d e and the other uh, homologue has the recessive alleles so because the order of the genes is A, B, C, D, E and if you see uh, the other chromosome having recessive alleles, the order of the genes is A, then comes D, C, B and E. So to lie parallel, each gene has to lie parallel to each other in paternal and maternal chromosomes. So enable, to enable uh, bivalent formation, both the chromosomes undergoes loop formation like this. A is forming a loop like this and here the second chromosome is also forming the loop, loop like this but it, it is forming a knot also like this. And this re X represents the uh, crossing over or the synapses. So this is another diagram where you can see that the loop formation is happening in both the chromosomes and represents normal chromosome with the order of genes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I and the second chromosome is inverted chromosome with the order of genes A, B, F, E, D, C and you can see that since the inverted uh, part of the chromosome is not involving any 
centromere so this is your paracentric chromosome and because uh, only one of the chromosome has undergone um, inversion so this is a inversion heterozygote if both the chromosomes undergoes inversion we, uh, we would uh, say that this is that is inversion homozygote so this uh, diagram or picture is from uh, the book Russell and here you can see that in paracentric inversion these are two homologous chromosomes and uh, one of the chromosomes is normal the, the upper one is normal chromosome with the order of the genes a b c d f g h and in inversion chromosome you can see that the um, order of the genes is a d c d e f g h so on the part of the chromosome b c d has inverted instead of b c d in the inverted chromosome the order is d c d so these homologous chromosomes to enable bivalent, bivalent formation both the chromosomes are undergoing loop formation the normal chromosome is forming a simple loop and the other chromosome is forming a loop but uh, this chromosome is also uh, forming a loop in a like this in a uh, not fashion so that the, all the genes lie parallel to each other a is parallel to a b is parallel to b c is parallel to c d is parallel to b e is parallel to e f is parallel to f g is parallel to g and h is parallel to h so say uh, the first chromosome has two chromatids one two and the second chromosome has two chromatids three four say we number them so once and say if the crossing over happens between chromatid number 2 and chromatid number 3 so once the um, crossing over happens and the products are formed uh, the four products which are formed after paracentric inversion are uh, a normal chromosome a dicentric chromosome with two centromeres which is also called a chromosomal bridge a acentric chromosome uh, which without a, uh, any centromere and this is also called a Lagarde and when the segregation these chromosomes try to segregate from each other at anaphase and this is how they orient themselves so first is your normal chromosome then uh, the first one is normal chromosome the third one here represented here is a inverted chromosome the second one represented uh, here has is uh, some uh, your uh, um, uh, second and fourth both um, are forming a dicentric bridge so uh, second uh, and then this acentric chromosome this will be lost because um, of no centromere so these are the four products which are formed after paracentric inversion normal chromosome inverted chromosome a deletion product and um, a dicentric chromosome so this is another diagram showing the same phenomenon where uh, the, these are two homologous chromosomes and in the second picture you can see that both the chromosomes are undergoing loop formation in the third picture you can see that this is the normal chromosome this is the um, red one is the inverted chromosome the third product is your dicentric bridge because it has two centromeres and this is also called inversion bridge then this is last is acentric fragment without any centromere and this is your um, also called Lagarde because it lags behind other chromosomes ultimately during segregation at anaphase this dicentric bridge will be breaks uh, when the segregation takes place so these are the four products which are formed and this is the picture from Griffiths which again shows the same phenomenon these homologous chromosome both forming um, loops during zygotine after crossover these four products are formed normal chromosome inverted chromosome acentric uh, or Lagarde and a dicentric chromosome after an aphase the side dicentric um, bridge breaks 
and ultimately a normal for product a normal product um, although the inverted chromosome is inverted but it because of the presence of all the genes we will consider it a normal product and other two are having deleted genes so they will be deleted products so this is the diagram which we have discussed in class how the different products are formed after paracentric inversion so we started with a uh, inversion heterozygote what happens after zygotene uh, to form bivalent formation both the chromosomes the inverted and the normal it undergoes zygotene uh, undergoes loop formation then the four products are formed and uh, these four products how they orient themselves after anaphase so the four products which are formed after paracentric inversion are a normal chromosome a dicentric bridge which is also called a inversion bridge because it has two centromeres so it is called dicentric bridge the fourth third product is lagard which lags behind other chromosomes that is why it is called lagard and it is called acentric chromosome because it has no centromere and the fourth product is inverted chromosome having the inverted region so this picture is from pk gupta and in this picture you can see the same uh, phenomenon of paracentric inversion they have represented and what are the products after paracentric inversion the first one is a normal chromosome the second one uh, which is represented in this circle this is a dicentric chromosome the third is inverted chromosome and the fourth is a lagard so how they orient themselves uh, we have discussed this before during anaphase so this is your normal chromosome uh, this is your uh, inverted chromosome this is inversion this is, these are the two pictures which show inversion bridge lagard and lagard so these two pictures this uh, these two pictures are of anaphase and uh, these are the two poles and you can see that this is a bridge which is a dicentric chromosome so this is this question mark here this is representing a dicentric bridge or the inversion bridge and here you can see lagards which are ultimately lost so here this question mark uh, in this picture you will say that these are lagards or acentric chromosomes and uh, this is how the chromosomes orient themselves during paracentric approach so i hope students you have understood the topic and please make sure that you uh, refer books different books to understand this topic better and let us meet in next lecture thank you students